Around five one afternoon, Brandy looked out on the deck and saw this amazing bobcat just a few feet away from our cat pumpkin. We had seen this cat peering through the sliding glass door into the living room the day before, and I predicted we would never see him again. But there he was, according to Brandy, stretched out, the two of them catnapping. As we shot stills and video, we wondered why he was looking right at us and not running away. Why he seemed so tame and relaxed. Why he was even on our deck at all instead of hiding in the bushes. But most of all, why he wasn't already eating our cat even though he was three times bigger. Fortunately, Punkin knew that if he tried to run or even moved a muscle, he might be doomed. Check out that tail. Four months and 10 days later, we were having a party when our guest calmly informed us, there's a bobcat on your deck. We all agreed he seemed tame. He was looking right at us and just hanging out. He looked somewhat thinner than the last time we saw him. It seemed apparent to us that he had been raised in captivity and didn't have a clue about hunting for himself. As you will see later, this is not typical wild bobcat behavior. He was also a lot bigger than the real bobcat we would encounter next. We talked about feeding him and wondered what we could do for him. The general rule is, never feed wildlife. We called an animal rescue site, but the bobcat expert was out of town, so we never hooked up. I did find listings for bobcat kittens on the internet for $750. The neighbors were pretty scared. We saw a printed sign in the alley a couple of blocks away that said, Bobcat sighting, watch your kids and pets. In hindsight, I wish I'd have listed him on Craigslist, or at a veterinarian's, or a paper or something. If not to find the original owner, at least to find a new home for him. This would be the last time we'd see this animal. We were all sad for him. A year and four months later, it all started again, but this time with a real, authentically wild bobcat. I saw her from a second floor window sneaking up the trail by the creek to check out our squirrels. She got spooked and ran off. But ten minutes later, she was back. Smaller, stockier, and less colorful than the last cat, she was way more stealthy and shy. We would get to shoot four different episodes with this cat over a three week period. She was always stalking our squirrels, but these tough little cats will eat almost anything. Their primary diet is cottontail rabbit, which we have plenty of, but we heard they also eat rodents, beaver, birds, and even deer. Alternating intense and tension in cat naps, she waited 53 minutes before pouncing, which unfortunately I missed but I got a thrill out of observing this beautiful wild animal doing its wild thing. A few days later, on a cold, rainy Sunday morning, I saw her again in the middle of the yard soaking wet. She must have been pretty hungry because I thought cats didn't like wet. I couldn't figure out what she was focused on, but pretty soon that became apparent as I got the thrill of watching her stalk some squirrels over by the bird feeders. She missed again. Was she going to starve? Was she going to improve her technique and score? I was at least becoming more confident I'd be seeing her again. So a few days after that, I was standing right here looking at a couple of squirrels and birds feeding, and she bounded over that retaining wall right there with the ivy on top and nailed a squirrel. 
They wrestled on the ground for about five seconds, both laying on their sides. It was violent. When I awoke from my shocked amazement, I ran back upstairs and grabbed the camera and got this shot. About 50 minutes later, she resurfaced and bolted the heck out of there. So about a week went by, and there she was again, crouched next to my Japanese pagoda, perched near the edge of the creek. She in fact hadn't fooled any of the squirrels, who were not only aware of her, but were in fact quite curious about her. Like before, sometimes she was on high alert and sometimes taking cat naps. And to witness this comical yet dangerous dance between the squirrels and the bobcat was amazingly entertaining. They were bounding all over as if in a contest to see who could get the nearest to the beast without getting caught. This cat waited in this spot for two and a half hours before she attacked, resisting relentless taunting from the herd of squirrels that run around in my yard. I've always thought that all animals, upon close scrutiny, have a lesson for humans. Cats offer the example of patience. Cats can wait calmly for long periods of time for what they want. But it wasn't a boring two and a half hours to have experienced all this in real time in the live presence of this amazing wild animal it was an exhilarating and near holy experience for me. Reviewing the footage, I saw several better opportunities she missed. But when she attacked, it was as though her eyes were attuned to the sunlight. She simply just couldn't see the little critters when they ran into the shade. But man, she was beautiful. I'll never forget it. And this would be the last time I'd ever see that bobcat.